They also carry a full line of Jamaica products. And you get free delivery with the purchase of $50 or more. So the next time you think meat, go to 2327 MLK right here in St. Pittsburgh, or you can call them at 727-317-5. Total Praise, that's right, Total Praise, broadcasting live each and every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. Fridays, 9 to 10, 30 a.m., Sundays, 7 to 9 a.m., your radio gospel angel. Hi, this is Sister Huge of Total Praise on WUJM, giving you the best gospel. I make you lose shoes, shout all around in the house. That's right, your host, Sister Diane Hughes, right here on 99 Jams, your radio gospel angel here on 99 Jams. Have problems with your brakes or CV joints? Then go to Florida Brakes and Tires. Mr. Roosevelt and his experienced team will take care of that for you at a very competitive price. You cannot beat that's Florida Brakes and Tires. Located at 1254 34th Street South St. Petersburg. They also provide you with roadside service and offer you both new and used tires. Call Florida Brakes and Tires at 727-327-5288. That's 727-327-5288. Or just pull up at the shop at 1254 34th Street South St. Pete. That's 1254 34th Street South St. Petersburg. Peace and light. This is your brother John, and I would like to invite you to tune in to the Tampa Bay Breakfast Club on 99 Jam every Monday and Wednesday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. For the latest in pop culture news and unique perspectives on hot topics, make sure you tune in and start your day off right with the Tampa Bay Breakfast Club right here on 99.1 FM, 99 Jam. The Taste of the Island Marketplace is now open in St. Petersburg, 22 19, 31st Street South, right next to the restaurant. With fresh produce, meats, and a host of your favorite grocery items, shop at Taste of the Island's Marketplace for quality meats such as oxtail, goat head, cow foot, and goat meat. And get your favorite fresh produce such as breadfruit, callaloo, yellow yam, and ackee. Check out the marketplace for all your hard-to-find Caribbean products from Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Jamaica, Haiti, and much more. Taste of the Island Marketplace is your location for your favorite brands such as Grace, HTV, Excelsior, Lasker, Walker's Wood, Maggie E, Tasty, Caribbean Dream, Easy Spice to mention just a few. That's Taste of the Island Marketplace and Restaurants, 2219 34th Street South in St. Petersburg. Call them at 727 873 7559. That's 727 873 7559. This is Cara Festival Radio, 99 Gems, the
Good morning, good morning, Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area, and all the hoods near me. Uh, this King John, the voice of the people, we're going to get right on into the show. I already got a caller. Uh, before I bring on my caller, I just definitely want to bring up that we are having a, a Black Men's Rising meeting tonight at Central Station Barbershop. Hey, uh, Black Men, we're going to sit down and talk about Black Men stuff, man. This will be at 6 p.m. today. Thursday, July 21st, Central Station Barbershop and Grooming. And the address is 2325 Central Avenue South in St. Petersburg, Florida. If you need more information on this meeting tonight, uh, that the phone number will be 727-320-6264. And the phone number for the radio station right here, if you want to call in and interact with me or any of my guests, 727-637-637. 2416. Uh, this King Jab right here with y'all. And we got guests. We got guests already on the phone this morning. We got guests that they're ready to, 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 to lay it on the table. We're going right in this morning. Can you hear me on, on, on the line there, uh, my, my guests? Hello? Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is King Jab. Um, I got a very bad reception on your end, but we're going to work it out. Yeah, they call me, you know, King Jab. I'm one of the eight King members. Um, you know, they do call me Jabbo in, in, you know, in the hoods. Those that know me in the hoods, they know me as Jabbo. Um, I'm, I'm right here from the city, and I represent nothing but what's in our inner city. Uh, but could you please introduce yourself? Because my listeners know me. Who am I speaking with? Sound very muffled. I don't know. We might have to uh, do another. Uh, yes, let, let, let try, try to call back in. I'm, I'm right here waiting on you because this is a very bad connection. I want people to hear your information. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes, sir. So we're gonna try to get my guests back on the line. Um, I definitely had a bad connection, but yeah, um, I, my guests the morning are from. I ain't gonna even tell y'all, man. I'm just gonna keep it. I'm gonna just keep it gangster and just let it roll because I want the people to, you know, just be ready for whatever. Be ready for whatever. I got a few news articles I'm gonna hit this morning, and one of them might go right along with my guests. One of them might go right along with my guests. The Weekly Challenger put out an article about black residents creating a black uh, African people's militia. I don't see nothing wrong with it. We, we have to protect our neighborhoods. And this African people's militia is, let me read this article uh, about the Uhuru movement. On Sunday, July 10th was just another day. And what happened on July 10th was... Um, Somebody came to the Yoruba building and pretty much uh, an operative jumped out with a military issue flamethrower and burnt the Yoruba flag, which I, I feel like is very disrespectful. If you are a part member, you believe or not, when you burn someone else's flag, that's just a sign of disrespect. Uh, but the 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 backlash of this and what happened of this is that. You know, there, there was another sit down and, and we, they want to create our own black African militia. After the reviewing the community resolution meeting, participants determined that the African community must build an African people's militia to protect black people from various security threats in this world. This militia will not be like the white militia that serve interests for white power 
and systematic and colonialism and in the system of colonial and capitalism, a system that currently dominates the lives of African people on every level. So I love this. I, I just, I, I really do love this. And the reason why I do love it because I'm not allowed to carry. So all the people that are allowed to carry, protect, train, uh, those young men, as soon as they hit 21, those young ladies, as soon as they hit 21, they need to be trained. This, this, this world is different. We need proper training. I, I don't know what happened to my guests, but I, I'm, I'm waiting on them. Yeah, we need proper training, proper military. I'm, I, how, how do you handle a firearm? How do you handle a uh, fire gunfire situation? Uh, firearm safety. Uh, how to keep firearms out of the hands of the children in the house. Are, are the children in the house being being taught how to utilize the firearm? All right. I think I got my guest back on. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's a whole lot better. A whole lot better. Could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm here. Now I still got a, 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 a echo of, of something going on. Let me turn all my stuff off. See, so see if it's on my end. All right. Uh, can you guys please introduce yourself? Okay, so we, we still got a very horrible connection. Um, very, 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 very horrible connection. Could you please call me on my phone, 813-516-0632? Let's work this out because I, I want the people to get this information. So uh, 813-516-0632, and I'm just going to relay it through my phone because I don't know if it's the background or what, what's going on, but I, I need people to get this information because it's important. We got a whole hour, so so it's me and you. I'm gonna get you in within this hour. All right. So uh, call me back on my phone, please, and I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this interview started. All right. All right. So um, moving along, uh, I'm, I'm gonna work these technical difficulties. I thank y'all for being patient. There was also another black men's conversation uh, about mental health held by USF and. This was a, 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 a you know, I, I just love the fact that black men are sitting down talking. We go through so much in, in this world. Um, I'm, I am I am one of us. I am, I'm definitely a black man, and I know the, the pressures that we hold in this world. So with us holding these pressures, we got to sit down and talk to each other to work our problems out because we, we I, I think that, we hold on to our problems and we project them towards our family, which is not the correct, proper thing to do. So, uh, Carla, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I got a whole lot better. Whole lot better. Whole lot better. Um, nice, nice, nice. All righty. So, can you uh, tell us who you are? And... Yeah, let's try this one more time. Third time to talk, right? Yes, sir. My name is Dexter Lewingo. I'm, uh, I'm the chair of the... Uh... St. Petersburg Unit of the African People's Social Party. Um, also, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Peace right here in St. Pete. All righty. And I want to bring me on this platform today. Hey, man, I, with, 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 uh, the, with my people in the community anytime, I'm definitely a believer in even if you ain't participating, why is you hating? So, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what what's, what does the pleasure of this call this morning? I heard you guys got something going on that y'all want to introduce the community to. Yes, yes, most definitely. So this coming weekend, we have uh, we have an event called uh, Unity Through Reparations. It's an event being held by an organization called the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Now, this is an organization uh, made up of white people. 
um, that works under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, so it's a group of white people um, struggling under the leadership of black people. And the primary work that this organization does is basically take resources that have been, you know, resources that have been stolen from the black community, from the African community. They take these resources that have been stolen from us, they take them back from the white community and put them back into the black community in the form of uh, the who are movement, the number of institutions that we have, not just in St. Petersburg, but in various um, uh, states throughout this country and areas throughout the world, um, just for the purpose of economically developing the black community, the African community. So that's the primary purpose of this organization. They'll be having an event this Saturday. It'll be happening uh, July 23rd, Saturday at 4 p.m. at uh, the Body Electric Yoga Company, which is at 3015 7th Street North, St. Petersburg, where they'll be just discussing further um, just the whole question of what the role of white people is in terms of black liberation and struggle of black people. What role do they play? As you know, historically, you know, there have been a lot of white people um, who say it they're for us. You know that. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. With their own agenda or they want to hijack the struggle and make it about them. I mean, they've been you know, there's been no shortage of opportunists and people who have their own selfish interests and say they're doing it in the name of black people, but they're not. So what really just has distinguished um, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, again, is their commitment to do this work um, while being accountable to a black organization, an African organization. So that's what sets the Uhuru Solidarity Movement apart from all of these other white people that do claim to be um, doing work uh, to afford black liberation. Okay, so let me let me get this straight because I, I heard something that I, I definitely want to pinpoint. So y'all have the white people seeking the reparations for us and they're doing the work to bring it back to us. Is, is that correct? Yes, yeah, that, yes, that's one of their roles, yes. Love it. I love it. That's one of their roles. Uh, one second, brother. I think I'm, uh, James is calling me. I'm going to try to translate him in. And if we're getting any kind of distortion, that may be the issue. Uh, me trying to transfer the line and talk. One second, brother. All right. Yeah, I, I love that the fact that um and, and even with the Yuhuru movement, just, just the movement and, and the last uh what was it during the mayoral race? One of these races they had a candidate that stood on reparation. So y'all have been about this. Y'all have been about that. So I respect it. Hello. Hello. All right. Okay, Jamie, you on? I am on indeed. Good morning. Yes, sir. We are we already started a little bit, Jamie, but you can go ahead and jump right on in. Let's let's double dutch this thing. Yeah, comrades. So I can give a brief introduction of um of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, but if you want to speak more towards, you know, your role um and you sent me on the ground. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Unit Chair Dexter. Thank you, uh my friend King King Jab. Am I am I correct? That is correct. Well, great. Really appreciate you having us on the show this morning. So my name is Jamie Simpson. I am the uh, local organizer or local chair of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, which was is an organization that was founded by the created by the African People's Socialist Party and works under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, calling on white people like myself to uh, come under their leadership to organize other people from the white community to take a stand of solidarity with black liberation and uh, to unite with and raise reparations to African people uh, by raising resources for the self-determination programs of the Uhuru movement, the economic development programs that this movement leads. And uh, that's, a, that's a really urgent question here in St. Petersburg as the Uhuru movement is uh, calling on the top can of field property, the 86 acres of the dome where the race play baseball, baseball to be returned to the black community from which it was stolen, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, that's that's the long and short of it. This is this is an organization uh, entirely accountable to the African People's Socialist Party, and it's just an honor to be part of it here in St. Petersburg. So so when you say return to the black community and the reason why I'm asking you this, because I myself was a member of that community um, um before I, my mom moved me from st petersburg to compton california i was living in laurel park so i left laurel park st petersburg florida and i moved to compton california i think i was about eight years old 
but I lived in that exact community. So when you say give it back to the community, like what should we be looking for as as those residents? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I I, I would want to turn it back over to, to Dexter, but I'd just say that it, that means all eighty six acres mm. of that of that property would go back to the black working class, and it would be the the, the black community's decision how how that property would be used. But I I, I think uh, Dexter would would be better uh, situated yeah. to respond specifically. Yeah. Well, no, I, mean, I really appreciate the question, and I appreciate the fact that you're a resident there. Mm-hmm. And I'm also in a, 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 a talk group, a listening group. I'm not going to say a talk group, but I actually joined the, the listening group to listen to what the people in the community want to do about that, because I, I like to get active. I don't like to just stand on the sideline. When I see things that affect me, I like to get active. So go That's ahead. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I so I understand that you know what's uh, what's currently in Tropicana Field Dome was at uh, one time uh, the gasoline district in the African community. And I understand was about the sixties, seventies, and eighties. You know when the city was trying to take this land that they uh, they approached members of the African community and they had all kind of promises, promised them jobs, promised them different kind of economic development opportunities and all. We all we had to do was sign the dotted line. And then all would be well. So when we, when we ended up signing a dotted line, lo and behold, no jobs came. We ended up being, you know, systematically removed from that community. We had people kicked out of their houses. We had, you know, churches shut down, uh, stores shut down. Just different means of the, the gas plant district community um, to sustain itself shut down and moved out. And years later, we have this Tropicana Field Dome. So now we have all, you know, we have an, all these discussions on what should become of the site that was the dome, and we say, well, it needs to go back to, we need to go back to where it came from. It needs to be under the under the control of the African community, because that's what it was prior to the dome being established. Like we understand, the dome was established on the, the really the bones, the bones of what mm. was the gas industry, and everyone has their two cents on what should be done with the black with the with the gas with the sorry chopping and field dome. But we understand that the black community really are the only rightful people to make the determinations. Just like Jamie said, you know, we demand all, you know, 86 acres of that dome. The reparations in the form of the Tropicana Field Dome, the land that it sits on, um, you know, we demand, a, you know, an infusion of, of capital and infusion of wealth into that community so we'd be able to build a businesses that serve the black community. That's our, that's our position on that, the long and short of it. I love that, it. Uh, if that needs to return to us. And just so I don't forget, I, I really want to attend your, uh, your meeting later on this evening, brother. Okay, that, that, that's at uh, Central Station Barber's Shop. Um, yeah, yeah. 2325 Central, it's at 6 o'clock, man. And um, like I say, yeah, because we, we go, we, we're trying to get to the bottom of us. And I, I like the fact that um, even when you ask me, like, why they call me King Jab, uh, that's because, you know, we, I was a start of a group called the Eight Kings, and we, we do a Mother's Day event every year. A lot of the people that you know, like Brother John is a member. Um, we do a lot of stuff in the community. And the, the biggest thing about the Eight Kings is we come from, we're black, but we have different beliefs. We have different structures in our household, but we come together and operate as one. And that's the way I feel like our entire community need that. I, I think like, our beliefs and our religions like it, it, it separate us when we still need to operate as one because although you know you said the, the african people move in uhuru as african people i believe we are tribal and when i say i believe we are tribal i believe that we never we all didn't have the same belief systems everybody in their own little sect we had different beliefs so we should still be able to operate as one just like we did at home and see, I, I, I agree with that because, you know, our position as far as African people, you know, we can't really make any determinations on what our tribe was. I mean, that's what colonialism did. The race by history. Now we got, you know, they have stuff like Ancestry and 23 and me and you paying hundreds of dollars uh, to, to, to get some tests with those things on what tribe they may not be from. But we're all clear that we're an African people. Mm-hmm. So we had like, so just kind of echoing what you said, we have better common. Like you also said, we got a lot of people throughout our community have a lot of different beliefs, different religious beliefs, different spiritual beliefs. Some people have no spiritual beliefs and no religious beliefs. But uh, I think we all we all share in confidence being black, a uh, black skin, and also a, a general uh, general experience of being oppressed in various ways, oppressed politically, oppressed uh, socially, economically. And 
we all agree that we do need to be an independent people. We need to have the means to make our own decisions about our own lives, about our own economies, about our own communities. I think we can all agree on that. So on that basis, I think we can all unite. Yeah, and I, I um, I just I, I love you know the movement, and I love what you guys are doing because even with my like even with my talks with my kids, uh, I have one son that's at Morehouse. I have one son that's leaving St. P. High, probably about to get trade school. And he's actually looking at going into the military. I have one son that's gay, but I tell all of these young men that are up under me, listen. I don't care what you are, what you represent, or how much money you got. When you walk into a room, the first thing they're going to see is your black skin. So hey, let's right. operate in that there. Let's operate in it because it's they, they, when you walk into the room, they're not going to say, oh, he's gay. Or, oh, he's rich. Or, oh, he's wealthy. Or, oh, he has a degree. He's a, oh, he's a black man. And then your judgment comes from, from we're we going to start at on down the line from there. So, um, I, I, I love the movement about the gas plant. So, like, what? What is the steps like? What what are what are we doing to push the city towards giving us this in re reparation? Like, what well, what's the marching orders? Right on. Well, um, you, I know you mentioned you've been attending these meetings around. Are you talking about the meetings that have been held by the mayor in recent weeks? Uh, yeah, I actually signed on to be a listener to these upcoming meetings and all of these meetings because you know, like I say, I I, I could have got on the pulpit. Which I always I'm always on the pulpit, but my wife said she said, "Wow, they told you to listen this time. This might be actually good for you." Because she said, "I don't never listen. I always got something to say." So, <laughs> so I'm I'm, I'm a, I, I like the position that I'm taking in this because although people think I don't listen, I do gather a lot of information, and that information does come in listening. When, when people sit down and talk to me, and I start really kicking it to them, like this is what's going on in our city. This is what's going to happen in our city. This is what I think the city is going to do. They were like, well, how do you know all this stuff? Because I gather information. Um, and, and gather information, I know that this area right here, St. Petersburg, in the Tropicana field where the dome at, this is the largest downtown redevelopment in America right now. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be profitable beyond measures. And I do deserve, uh, I do believe that us as a black community, we deserve some of this community because we're losing our community every day. This was a conversation I had yesterday. We're losing our community every day. Um, uh, gentrification, rising rent prices, all of this, we're losing what's of our community every day. I was telling someone a story the other day. I had my, my dryers broke. So I went to the Washing, I went to the washermat um, on 62nd South, I think it's 22nd Street, down there where the old um, subway used to be at. So at that laundromat, it, it's boarded up now. It was, it was about five big bullet holes going through the window. I'm talking about large bullet holes. And I, I turned to a white or Spanish guy that was standing right there next to me. I was like, man, you see these bullet holes? And this guy turned to me and said, oh, I ain't worried about that. They're not going to do nothing to me. And that touched me in a sense because we, we, us as black men, this is part of what I'm gonna bring up in this talk tonight. We're we we've been destructive to each other, and and everybody else is seeing that to the point where I, I'm gonna sit in here because I know although these big bullet holes is in here, you're not gonna be shooting at me. You're gonna be shooting at each other, and that's a problem that we definitely need to fix in our community. You're absolutely right. I mean, all this, all this, you know, all this becomes normalized. Mm -hmm. This kind of violence against each other becomes normalized. And you're absolutely right. You know, that does need to be addressed. Yeah, that does need to be addressed. Um, yeah, but then, you know, again, and we understand, too, all of this is really kind of symptomatic of this larger systemic issue that we keep bringing it back to colonialism. Like we call, when we talk about violence between um, the police, for instance, the police and members of the black community, we call that colonial violence because that's the violence that we experience as a result of being a colonized or oppressed person in this country. And we, that's how we understand it. When we look at you know, the gentrifiers kicking us out of our houses, we call that colonial violence as well. Again, this is things that we experience just because we are an oppressed people. We're being, being pushed out of our communities. And we talk about the violence between our own people. Mm. We call that colonial violence because more times than not, the violence has something to do with the question of you know, 
money or you know, gang violence, which was oftentimes is fighting over the scarce resources that are made available to us. And when, when resources are little, we end up fighting each other for what we have. And that makes all this violence that becomes normalized. I'm talking about gang violence, violence between people in a household, family members, all kind of violence. We understand there is a root cause of it all. And that's what we're trying to, that's what we're struggling against. Yes, and I um, go. I'm oh, sorry. Did you want to add something? No, no, no. Okay. I just want to say. Yeah. And, and, and we do that because, like you said, the stuff needs to be addressed. But you know, we emphasize the root of it all because I know sometimes and I, I'm not hearing that from you, but I know sometimes people can get caught up and they end up kind of just blaming ourselves for this violence that works some kind of inherently backwards kind of people, you know? No. Okay. People get caught up in those pitfalls. So yeah, I know we got. Really source. So, so I heard one of you guys say y'all was the chairman of the Yuhuru. Am, am I correct? What what was? What? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the uh, just the, the lead organizer of oh. the Uhuru Solidarity Movement okay. here in St. Petersburg. I certainly didn't need to give the impression. Oh no, no, I, that's, that's why. I, that's why I asked for clarity. That's why. I, but okay, so. And the reason why I asked because I, I wanted to, to tell a little story. I don't know how long you've been involved in your guru, um, but I, this is a story that I remember. And I was actually having this. This was a conversation we had in another barbershop with the Uhuru brother on Ninth Street. I actually have a business next to him. I think uh, the Twambe, um, the barber, and we was and, and, you know we was talking about uh, doing the riot in St. Pete. And we was talking about how the police waged war against the Uhuru building. And we was going down the timeline because I was in the streets and active in this riot. You know, I'm, we, we, we're telling them like what's going on and what's happening in the street. And a lot of people don't know. A lot of people really do not know. In the midst of this riot, when it was going down, it was the brothers in the hoods, the same ones that sh shot down the helicopter that ran these police officers off 18th because it was it was very much so like the media hide all this. It was a fierce gun battle on 18th Avenue from 22nd Street to 9th Street between the black community and the police officers. That's right. And that's exactly what was happening. It was a all out war. And this is what made the city of St. Pete go get tanks, all that stuff, because they realized that, oh, these dudes, we can't really handle these dudes like we thought we could. And at a time when it was assault on the Yuru building, even the people that don't believe or the people that don't uh, activate or don't join, man, we stood together and helped protect our community. And I and I love that. And that was a conversation that we had because this this really happened. It, they were firebombed. This is this is all a true story, and it, it's never really been told in this manner because it was those gangsters it was those drug dealers it was those just people in the hood that was tired that came together to support our community so we do have the unity here in saint petersburg and like you said the colonialism and the structure of it has really broken us down but once we go ahead but, but it, I'm saying that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to kind of break us down and discourage us from getting together like this. But yeah, now you know, for me, I'm from Boston, uh, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, and I and I, but I've been involved with this movement for a little while, and I've heard a lot of stories, and I spoke with a lot of people who played a direct role in that that struggle, and I was in the health and the main struggle. And like you said, we pushed them, we pushed them back, and it's, you know why? It's because we're all organized, we're on the same page. And that's all we say in the African community, the black community, we may not have the most money, we may not have the most guns at our disposal, but you know, our ultimate weapon is organization. And once we organize, we are unbeatable, we're impenetrable. That was the only way that we could have taken down a helicopter mm -hmm. and pushed back a police force with all the guns in the world and all the tanks and military warfare that disposal. The only way we pushed it back because we're on the same page and we're organized. And you know that you know that it's your whole movement. We have to be so surprised that led that rebellion, that gave it that structure. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. I was there, and I um, you know, I don't, I don't um, let's see, I I, I bring this up because it's our history, it's the truth. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hide it. I'm not gonna say, 
oh, it was wrong or that. that it's the truth of our history. And, yes, and that organization factor of our history is um one of the reasons why I think that they're breaking our, our community down for us. You said game, games. Uh-huh. I told you I left Laura Park and moved to Compton, California. I, I, I came back to St. Petersburg in 1997, an active game member. I had been, I graduated in high school in LA. I, I had been game banging since probably the, 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 the eighth or ninth grade. So I know what gang violence is. I know what gang activity is. And here it's just been made as a label and it's been publicized. Uh, a lot of these guys are going to prison where they have set up the recruitment camps for these gangs in prison. This is where they're coming home saying, oh, we are blood. And we this and we've been brought home because they're coming home from prison in these prison camps and they're came in gangs. Right. But I, I also know that it, it, even with the destruction of it, like it, it's so big because the laws of the federal government, when they removed the crack laws, all of those laws that they say Joe Biden implemented the drug laws, uh, when they removed those, they implemented those as gang laws. And it's being brought to light right now with uh, rappers like Young Thug and, and them. Th- those are the gang laws that they implemented. These are the same laws. This is why they're bringing them on Rico. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when I when I was talking to, I had a couple of you guys in here the other day. I said, um, you guys have to be careful because I look at your Facebook name when when you said uh, YNB money bag. Or, th- 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 these people are labeling y'all as gangs. That's your first label. You just put your stamp on yourself. You just put your stamp on yourself. Hey, you know, the, the gangs, you know, it's, it's, it's something else. I think a lot of it goes back to the whole question of organization. Cause I know you look at, you know, we look at a lot of these gangs, like, you know, I know, you look at the history of the Bloods, and I've heard also the history of the Crips. You said you were in Compton, right? Yeah. You know, a lot of these big gangs kind of got their, at least got their initial inspiration from organizations like the Black Panther Party. Absolutely. No, man, in the beginning, they, what, they're, what they're trying to set out to do was protect their community. Then, but, but, you know, we talk about the counterinsurgency, which is something a lot of people call the coin to the world. Well, basically, this whole process throughout the 60s and 70s, where all these revolutionary organizations were like systematically destroyed. We had a leaders getting killed, we had them getting locked up. So, once all the revolutionary leadership was dead or put in jail or forced into exile, these other groups that may have had some real revolutionary trajectory to them was then kind of co-opted and taken control of and then kind of reduced to these kind of gangs that just ended up killing each other, pushing drugs, pushing drugs, and they have to be But, well, you know, these, all, these, all, these, these street gangs were, again, put on the right trajectory, just had the right, polit- uh, right political education and understood what they were doing, understood the impact it had in the community, what they actually need to do. Um, for the community to be put on the right path. So I look at all, like a lot of these people, like a lot of these kids, you know, kids are real courageous, kids who aren't afraid to pick up a gun for whatever reason, but the problem is they, 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 got, they can't be quick to pick up a gun against people in their own community. Can't be quick to pick up a gun against your brother, your sister. And yeah. then, and then, and then uh, so on one hand, like you're saying, that's the police. On the other hand, you're picking up a gun against your brother, your sister, and they're doing the same work. The book. Well, that that also comes with the confusion of gang violence. Um, a lot of a lot of um, like you said, the gangs were created to protect the neighborhoods. And I, as a person that lived in it, I can honestly tell you the media portrayal of the gangs was Crips against Bloods. When realistically, anybody from Los Angeles will tell you that. 80% of the gang violence is black against Mexican. And that's that's and that's just a racism thing. It's black against Mexican. It's black against the Spanish. So that that was really the gang violence in Los Angeles. Uh the media per, 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 excuse me, perpetrated as Crips against Bloods. Uh, to go longer into that the music industry hyped it up and made it publicly, hey, I'm a blood I'm a blood. So then you start seeing bloods in New York City. You say you're from up north. So now you're seeing bloods in New York City. You're like, hold on, New York, y'all always been innovators. Why are y'all following LA talking about y'all Crips and Bloods? But it's the 
portrayal of the media. They took it from that and made it into something social, something that people can grab on, and 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 that's really what's poisoning. It, it's it's coming. It came through the music, and you. I always have to say this: that these are the views of King Jab, not the Ninety Nine Jams. But the people that control the music are the same people that control the liquor, and the same people that control the television. And all of this is owned by Jewish media. So our connection, our connection is getting back bad. I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Huh. All right. So yeah, man. Um, we 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 I only have an hour. I wish we could do this for all day long. But um, and and, and do you have anything that you want to give to the people in closing? Um, uh, any like I say, marching orders. What should the community do if they want to be involved in this? All right, let me let me cut you off because you you I, like I'm, I'm getting the distortion. Let me tell the people the meeting is uh, Sunday at 4 p.m. at the Uhuru House, correct? Absolutely, and I and I, I appreciate you calling, brother, and I look forward to seeing you later on tonight. Uh, any 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 part words for the people? people can call if you want information on the uhuru solidarity movement here in st petersburg you can contact us at 727-280-6345 that's 727-280-6345 or you can email us at st pete at uhuru solidarity.org that's st pete at uhuru solidarity Thank you very much. And for one one thing I want to say for my for I close with you guys is um and I speak about this later on with you tonight, brother, is I, I also want to work on uh syndicating these shows. I know you who has a radio station. And right. even with my show and the Breakfast Club, which is a larger show than mine, I, I think that we should be syndicating these shows and getting into uh, all the listeners as possible. We, we need to collaborate and, and get this media, man, to, to our people. Because we have a media 
outlet. We're 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 reaching the people. Uh, we're we're both growing. We're both growing weekly. So I, let's let's link together and make this happen. I appreciate you guys calling. Um, I'm open. If you ever you know have an issue or something you want to put to the community, uh, you can you got my phone number. Give me a call. Shoot me a text, and we can set up a meeting. I can get you guys in the studio. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thank you guys for calling out. And, and, and we go we're gonna continue this. This this is not over with. This is something that we're gonna work on throughout the entire future of, of our community. So uh, appreciate you guys and thank you for calling in. Oh man. So uh there's a Saturday, 4 p.m. at the uh, there's a meeting about the reparations for um, the gas plant district, and there's also a Yahoo meeting Sunday at 4 p.m. So people out there, listen. If you even if you don't believe or not, uh, when you go to these meetings, ain't no prayer call, ain't no um, I. I, I Ain't, ain't, ain't no uh, E-man. Ain't, ain't nobody forcing you to join these groups. It, it, it ain't, I'm not saying that these people force you to join the groups when they come, but it, it, this is not a, a, a religious meeting. This is a community meeting, so all are welcome. This is, it, it, like, stop. Let's get this out of here. Oh, I'm not going up there. With, no, they, we're not actually to come up here and, and, and join anything. We're actually to come up here and, be a, 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 and give your voice as a member of the community. So that, that's what we got to keep in mind when we when we see certain things like that, because I think the participation runs away because people are like, oh, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to know, but yes, yeah, it's, it's your hood. When, when something's done positively, you accept it. So be a part of it. Before I get out of here, um, shout out to my brother Reno Moore, man. Reno put a post up yesterday that kind of touched me. And um, it's something that I speak on on this radio station all the time. Uh, the brother put a post up that he lost two family members to fentanyl just this month. And this is a big issue in our community, everyone. There is a serial killer amongst us. Um, just be real about it. Somebody out here selling bad dope. Somebody is selling bad fentanyl and it's killing people. It's killing your family. And... and these people aren't going out and purchasing fentanyl to get high, um, not to be of judgment. They're, you know, I, from my understanding, not so, not say I'm 100% factual on this. Some people are going to get uh, uh, what they call it, what sexually enhancement uh drugs uh, uh, uh sexual enhancement a party with their spouse or with a young lady friend that they have and they're dying from fentanyl overdoses um some people you know if you're partying you used to taking you know ecstasy or whatever these drug dealers are cutting these things with fentanyl so right now we have a big problem in our community that we need to address because this ain't no joke. Um, watching um, TV shows and, 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 and it's being publicized on TV shows, so it's a big problem within our community. The bigger problem that I see within our community also is that we're, the, the new war on drugs is going to be the fentanyl. That's, that's going to be the new crack. That's going to be the new crack. So your sons, your nephews, uh, your daughters, perhaps, they're going to start, you know, up in their livestock. And, and when you go to federal prison, you are livestock. Any prison, you go to prison, you're livestock. Livestock. Why are you livestock? Because you have a number. You have a number that has to be counted every day. Um, along with your number comes their payment. In federal prison, they have what is called a four o'clock count. Four o'clock every day. I don't care where you at. If you are in the federal system, you will stand up to be counted. Wake up, stand up. Let me see you on your feet. It's count time. 
And that's it, it, it's put out there as oh, let's make sure we got all everyone here knows. That is the count to make sure that they get their money for you being a livestock. So keep that in your mind. You know what I mean? Everything is it, it is what it is. Just keep that in your mind that with livestock, <clears throat> when we go to these prisons. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody, I ain't gonna say everybody, I hate being monolithic, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people saw the the, the video of what happened at what Sesame Place, where you have these uh Sesame Sesame Street characters that were caught on not one. But after it came down to several videos, several videos where the characters was just really ignoring black children to the point where one of them was interacting with another child so heavy that it knocked the other black child down. Well, that would have been the end of the show for me anyway, because it, it wouldn't have been no more Sesame Palace. We're going to shut this down for the day. Now, if you don't knock my child or my grandchild down, yeah, we, yeah it's, it's, it's over for the day. We'll start again tomorrow, cause <laughs> yeah, cause I yeah, I'm finna set it off. But it said that they responded. It said that they responded. I'm trying to get the response. Okay, so the response was regarding to the incident yesterday. The costumes our performer wears makes makes it sometimes difficult to see at lower levels, and sometimes our performers miss hug requests from our guests. This was the statement they made. And it says that um, our brand, our part, our employees stand for inclusivity and equality on all forms. This is what Sesame Place is all about. We do not tolerate any behaviors in our part that are contrary to this commitment. We also are and always have been committed to making sure every family, every child has the best possible experience at a part and are incredibly disappointed that this does I'm not going to read all that there because that's flow. Cap. 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 I'm calling Cap on that. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, all the caps. That's straight Cap. And I'm going to tell y'all this again. These are the opinions of King Jab and not of 99 Jam. But I would like to do a research. I would like to do what they call it, a coming to Jesus because I'm willing to bet both of my eyebrows. Y'all hear me? I'm willing to put both of my eyebrows on the line. That the person in that blue, I, I know it was other characters, but it was like the blue uh, scroungy outfit. I can guarantee you this was a Spanish male. My opinion is not the opinions of 99.1 Jam. Uh, that... The new Hobby Bobs, who's been placed at the gun line, the per perpetrators of hate, the perpetrators of white racism, is being shown right there. It's the Spanish males. Um, yeah, straight up and down. Seven two seven six three seven twenty four sixteen. You want to talk about it? Let's talk about it because that's what I feel. If you pull that head off that costume, I can guarantee you, both of my eye, eyebrows, I'm, I'm willing to put on the line, that that was a Spanish male that was intentionally, intentionally ignoring these little black kids that was waving and running out there to you. You you seen them kids. You seen them kids. One of the kids, you signal off no, like don't touch you. And... Yeah, this this is a problem, y'all. This is gonna be a problem. Look, look at our governor. Our governor is the the new grand fool part of the clan. <laughs> Ain't that what they call it on um playing friends though? That's the grand fool part of the clan. Everything he does, all his movements, like he he, he you would think that he senses is a a, a a good old boy. Oh, good old boy. That's that's what he remind me of, man. Cause your movements and how you move is just racism. But then again, that's most of them. And I have a lot of Spanish friends. I have Cuban friends. I have a lot of friends from all races. And I, I'm not saying this because 
that this just how I feel. I'm saying this because these are the conversations that we have had before. These, these are the conversations that I'm going to call you bro. Why are they doing this? What, what's going on? Why is this happening like that? I'm going to call them because if you're my friend, I'm going to call you and put that pressure in your chest. Speak for your people. And from my Spanish friends, they, they tell you straight up, man, like, listen, the, all the Spanish people that are the Trump supporters, they they pro-white. For real. They they, they they would rather die than be considered a black man on this on this planet. They do not want to be there. They would, would like to be considered as white males, not black males. So I'm going to wrap this up, man. I'm going to wrap this up and get off y'all radio station this morning. Tonight, um, again, tonight we do have the meeting, Central Station uh, Barbershop at 6 p.m. Black Men Rising. Uh, y'all get there. 2325 Central Avenue. Let, let's talk about it. I, I'll be in the house. My CDAT members will be in the house, man. And, you know, we makes it we makes it happen. Um, I want to end this in saying, you know, I love my community. I love my peoples. And we just go do what we do out here. This King Jab and I'm out, man. If it ain't one thing, it's another. That's right. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Broadcasting live here on 99 Jams. WUJM each and every Wednesday morning between 10 a.m. and 12 in the p.m. With your host, Brother West. That's right. We talk about the topic that no one else yeah, I was still talking about. Right, no, religion, bad, religion, man. Religion, man. Religion, everyone else. Man, man. That's right. Just oh, like life. If it ain't one great. thing, it's another. Wow. The hottest show you bring here. Old school and more. 99 Gems, the Burger Saint.